One of the Signal um, uh, publications that we're making this year is a special issue uh, called Doing Critique. That is a reflection by uh, Rocco Bellanova, Jonathan Luke Austin, and Mahai Kaufman, who have edited a special issue on the question of doing and practicing critique. And that gets to the core mission of security dialogue, which is to push forward questions of uh, critical security studies about what it means to be critical. And we're really excited to present that special issue. Security Dialogue is really happy to be celebrating its 50th year of continuous publication. And to celebrate that milestone, uh, we've engaged with a number of different uh, partners and a number of different events. So here at the International Studies Association, we've got three separate roundtables by current authors and uh, also by young and emerging scholars on the questions that Security Dialogue thinks are important. What counts as security? What's the opposite of security? What's the future of critical security studies? One of the things that to me is a constant in security studies is that um, we tend to be too comfortable with the frameworks that we use. Um, even as critical scholars, we um, have become accustomed to certain ways of thinking about um, security and in the process we lose our criticality. So um, as a response to that, my contention is that we need to continuously interrogate our own frameworks and particularly also interrogate the ways in which uh, security and our contributions to security studies are always already political. I will suggest that there are at least two constants in security studies. The first is its intellectual diversity. And uh, its intellectual diversity was, first of all, an intellectual diversity compared to traditional approaches to security studies. And in that sense, critical security studies make a breakthrough and created a diversity. And this diversity remains as such. The second intellectual diversity is an intellectual diversity within critical security studies themselves. And the second aspect is the deepening of um, a research agenda that is no more concerned only with uh, uh, traditional security practice or pr security practice that were classically marked as um, security relevant, but also practices that concern scientific production or knowledge production, but also uh, more concretely the production or the making of algorithms and how much they can impact uh, our understanding and our making of uh, security. Well, I think the biggest problem uh, is what's changing in the world, uh, which is to say that everything has become security studies. So we're worried about food security, we're worried about human security, we're worried about migration security. Uh, there's sort of no issue for which the governments of the world won't call something a, a security threat, which puts a different kind of responsibility on us to think about why we were having debates over expanding the concept in the first place, and what kinds of new terms, but also new ways of asking these questions, right? So whether it's being engaged with policymakers and stakeholders or doing ethnography of the very lived experiences of people who live often very insecure lives, or it's trying to come up new ways in which these circulate through popular culture. We have to be attentive to the fact that we need both new tools and new concepts to address a world that's increasingly securitizing, militarizing, and often, in many cases, going to war in a kind of permanent state of global warfare. From my perspective, the, the biggest changes is the, the concern with uh, everything material. So putting material agency uh, into security studies, and that means uh, putting both um, uh, market technologies as forms of governance, but also um, the small things, the very mundane like algorithms that play a role in security, uh, in shaping and infrastructure in security, and uh, adding um, the material, the bodies uh, that come with that. That's been a real, real change in the last uh, 10 years. Prepare to expect the unexpected. This is the basic rule of politics as of security. The only thing that doesn't change is change itself. 
Timing is everything. Temporality is always dangerous. And one should always try to offer hope, uh, given the temporal changes in the world. Security, of course, tries to create an illusion of permanence, to give some sense that uh, human nature or the national interest uh, is a permanent value that must be secured at all costs. The problem is that what is to be secured, whether this is liberty, equality, um, democracy, elites, even those people doing the securing, are to be secured. There's always a relationship between something and security. Security um, seems to be changing all the time. Um, we can see today discourses about um, technologies that tell us that we see um, now automated weapons, artificial intelligence, big data, and so on, transforming security. The sort of uh, technological fetishes. But I want to argue that we need to both take it seriously and step back. Um, engaging with all these different technologies of security, I think we need to make two moves in which we think about how technologies um, transform security, uh, but also how in so doing they reconfigure um, practices that often have been already there. You never live in a world where nothing changes or everything changes. It's always a mix and it's a major political decision to ensure that certain things don't change. So how is it that you can block change? And my claim would be that this is very closely linked to the core interest of, of the journal. Um, the concept of securitization captures, in a sense, that. The idea that you can point to some development and say, that is not acceptable, that is not going to happen. That is the key mechanism of non-change. So what is changing over time is what are the things that are prevented from changing and how is that done? And when the journal was born 50 years ago, it was very clear that you pointed to certain things and you had measures right against that. Changes in the East or the West as part of the Cold War, you blocked a specific development by pointing to it. What we see nowadays is still that it's policies of fear and danger, and in that sense, securitization still that blocks changes, that creates dramatic interventions. So when we have Trump elected, we have Brexit, we have an overturning of the Iran nuclear deals, major moves that block important processes of change. These are still done very much in an atmosphere of fear, danger and so on, but it's not really clear what the link is. People are fearful of very diverse things that are in a very strange ways than aggregated interactions. So in my view, we really need to study much more carefully today how non-change is produced in a very different way from the way we used to. Fifty years ago, when the Bulletin of Peace Proposals was first published, it was a really different world, not just in terms of academic production, but in terms of the politics on the ground. And so it is really exciting to be here today talking with um, uh, giants of the field and emerging scholars about what the next 50 years might bring. Mm -hmm.